Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. Today, we're going to be discussing one of my favorite topics personally, and that is jealousy. I get asked about this all the time, and I know it's something that it it goes beyond conditioning. I actually think that jealousy has some evolutionary functions as well. So it is one of those things that you can look through different lenses in order to understand the function of it. But for the sake of this discussion, I'm going to make jealousy look really, really, really clear to you. So jealousy is one of two things. It's One, informing you of something that you desire. So the only time that you're going to feel jealousy really is if there's something that you want, that you're in the present moment experiencing a lack around. And honestly, even just reframing how you view jealousy is a lot of the time enough to alchemize it. So where you'll experience issues with this is if you just go deeper and deeper into the jealousy other than looking at, well, what are you actually pointing at? Where are you being directed? And underneath jealousy is fear or desire, depending on how you alchemize it. That's going to be the difference. If you let it fester, you're going to sink into fear and separation. If you focus on desire, you can shift back into alignment faster. So that's how I like to work with it personally. I'm no stranger to jealousy, but it's also something that I'm not afraid of feeling. And so it moves really, really quickly for me. So I can feel jealousy. I can feel into that edge. And I guess we could also bundle this together with comparison because jealousy is a form of comparison. Um, Even though comparison is a bit more broad because comparison isn't necessarily going to come up in the form of jealousy. Jealousy is just one form of comparison, though, because comparison can feel like you feeling defeated or bad about yourself, right? It's not necessarily going to present as jealousy. So if you get into the habit of every time you feel a ping of jealousy, you immediately ask yourself what your desire is. Immediately. Immediately jump to where's the desire? Where's the longing? Where's that feeling? What am I actually trying to calibrate to? And then that will help you shift. Honestly, I can shake jealousy in a few seconds if I'm really tuned in. So it's not something that has to linger in your system. I'm also not going to dive too deeply into like relational jealousy and insecurities and, and fear of abandonment. That's that's a whole other can of worms. But you could also look at desire in that context as well. Because a lot of the time we're talking about the same things, right? So if it presented as jealousy in a relationship, are you looking for attention? Are you looking for connection? Are you desiring presence? Are you desiring quality time? What are you actually desiring? Are you desiring a sense of security within yourself, right? Because your partner will not be able to jump through infinite hoops in order for you to feel secure within yourself. So that's definitely an inner game. But that's just another way to phrase it is the jealousy is pointing you toward a desire and that once you identify that, it can get easier and you're going to calibrate and align to that much faster. Now, the second thing that jealousy really helps us with is it's a notification for when you've fallen into separation. So just how I mentioned that jealousy is an expression of comparison, both of these things are an indication of separation as a whole. So if you're looking at someone or something and saying, I'm jealous of that person, what you're doing is you're saying, I do not get to experience the things that they get to experience. And that's not true. That's a lie. That's a lie and an illusion of separation. So this is also another 
strategy that I use to shake this really, really quickly, no matter what type of comparison or jealousy is coming up around this. So you see someone that has something you want or that you desire or that you wish to experience. The best thing that you can do immediately after that is understand that if you're feeling like you're separate from that experience or that you start cutting yourself off or you get that jealousy ping, you're in separation. And the faster you can identify that, the easier it's going to be to, again, shift out of it. Then... After you've identified Okamon's separation, and I understand that's a lie, that's an illusion that I've bought into in this moment for however long you were in it, the next thing that you want to do is remember that whoever got that thing or has that thing is simply tapped into an energetic that exists in the collective. So if someone does something first that you haven't done, that means they've tapped into a blueprint, whether they were the first one or the 80th one or one of many. No matter what, if they are experiencing it, that means it's an experience that can be had if you desire to have that as well. It's something that is, I I call desire the North Star, right? That's pointing you in the direction of your soul, your dharma, whatever it is that you want to call it, whatever feels best to you. And it's safe for you to proceed in that direction. I've done other podcasts on why, but you you get the idea that if someone is holding something that you want, you can use the same collective strategies, the same way we have to deal with a collective shadow. We can also deal with collective desires. If someone is making a ton of money, then that means making a ton of money is possible. So instead of falling into separation and saying they can do it and I can't, you can use that as evidence and confirmation that it exists, it's possible, it's available, and it's already in the collective, it's locked and loaded. And you can apply that to pretty much anything. Now, of course, when we're in the process of reshaping and reworking paradigms, we're kind of blind in the beginning because we're, we're trying to invent things. But something like jealousy or comparison, that's actually a lot easier because that means it already exists. And if you don't think that it already exists, then you're probably in scarcity. I see people do this with relationships all the time. They talk deeply about, I just want a really, really, really exceptional man. And then you see a couple with two exceptional people. And then there's jealousy and anger and resentment and scarcity that can be triggered from seeing that in the world. Right? All the good men are taken. Or you see someone who just got their dream job that pays them a ton of money and has all these benefits and perks and this awesome schedule or a four-day work week or whatever. And then you're like, oh, all the good jobs are taken. There's no jobs that are available to me. Or if you were struggling to move into a new house or get approved for a new house, and then you see someone who just bought a house or was approved to rent a really awesome house or something like that, and you're like, ah, oh, the housing market is just so competitive and, and so constricting, and I don't have any options, and this, that, and the other thing. When you were just sent evidence that people are buying and renting houses, or you were just sent evidence that someone got the job of their dreams or you were just sent evidence that power couples exist or that good men exist or, or whatever your story or point of jealousy might be. And the faster you can get yourself to the point of understanding that if it exists for one, it exists in the collective and the collective is something we all have access to and you can extract it from that collective web that we're a part of, life is going to get a lot easier. So despite having plenty of points of jealousy that I bump into from time to time, it's not scary. 
it's not something that needs to be avoided or you don't need to shield yourself from it. You don't need to eliminate jealousy from your experience, but you need to understand what it's really pointing at. It's pointing at your desire and it's pointing at separation. And the more that you can just get into the habit of understanding where you are, whether you're in deep longing for something or you're feeling really, really, really separate from your your source, your soul, whatever you want to call it, God, that will inform what the next best steps would be for you. And a lot of the time, this is just something that I'm talking myself through. Right, if I see something, I feel the jealousy, then I go, okay, this is what I really want. Okay, that means it exists. Okay, I'm connected to it. Okay, I can get myself there. Then all of a sudden, I haven't gone off into the weeds. I didn't veer off into some direction that really doesn't feel good. It was just simply a matter of reframing how that really is for me. What it really means. What is actually the function? And if you can treat jealousy as a clue with a purpose and a function, then it's not going to be something that you that you fear or that you resist. I'm not saying that you want to be in a chronic state of jealousy, right? That's not going to feel good. But trying to eliminate it from the human experience or that your ego is going to spontaneously just get rid of jealousy or comparison, I mean, that's a pretty tall order. You know, you've got a human, you've got an ego, and those are not going anywhere. So the more that you can focus on alchemy, reframing, integration, self-awareness, emotional intelligence around this experience, the faster it's going to move, the easier life is going to be, and the more connected you will feel, and the easier it's going to be to calibrate to the things that you want. Because you're going to look out into the world and you're always going to want stuff, right? There's always going to be more to experience, more to refine, whether that be an emotional state, right? Even if it's not something in the material world or a relationship, it could be something just like radiating joy or excitement or deep pleasure and sensuality or leaned back femininity. You could be jealous of someone's energetic state that they're in. It doesn't even need to be something based in the material world. So there's always going to be more that leaves you wanting. That's the fun part. That's the whole point of creation. I've talked about this a lot. And in my experience, because we want things, it's very, very, very challenging to find anyone. It's almost, I I mean, honestly, I don't know anyone personally who doesn't experience either jealousy or some type of comparison. Because wanting is also going to give you those experiences as the contrast, right? That's the dualistic experience that you're going to have from a place of wanting. I mean, the monks will tell you Well, the easiest way to get rid of that problem is to just completely detach yourself from the material world, completely detach yourself from desire and wanting. That's a snooze fest to me. That's boring. So I would rather alchemize comparison or jealousy. I'd rather alchemize those things than numb myself or try to dissolve my ego, which is impossible or try to somehow water down and numb my experience by trying to reduce negative emotion or negative frequency. That's not necessary. This is the other thing about energetic mastery, we could say. If that is what you're after, right, that's something that I'm very, very committed to and that I work on with all of my clients, You are not going to eliminate bad days or bad feelings. And if you go into this work with that expectation, I mean, you are seriously barking up the wrong tree. You know, that's not the way this game is played. It's not. We're on a plane of duality. We're on a material plane with a lot of density. And so you have to learn how to play here. And part of that is being able to hold both. 
and understand that both are going to happen and both are going to exist and that that's okay making peace with that part but never ever ever would I suggest that you hold the expectation or anticipation of dumbing down and reducing your emotional range unless you're going to the monastery then that's okay. That makes sense. Then you can have more of that expectation because joy will float by. Excitement will float by. Anger will float by. Everything will just float by and you can stay on that even keel. You can. I mean, honestly, that, that sounds like a pretty good vacation, but it's not the way that I'm interested in doing this lifetime. So when it comes to something like jealousy, There are two ways that you could view this problem. I'm just going to call it a problem to keep it simple. Let's say that it was kind of like you had pain in your leg. The first option is cut your leg off. You won't have any more leg pain if you just cut it off. The second option is you look at the leg, you feel the leg, you touch the leg, you move the leg a little bit. You feel into it and you assess what it needs and then you give your leg what it needs and you can continue walking on it. But in order to understand what recovery looks like in that context, you have to be able to feel what pain feels like in order to feel what a healthy leg looks like as well. So that's the whole point of, oh, okay, the leg pain, jealousy, We look at it. Okay, well, what do I actually need? What I need is connection. What I need is to plug back into my source. What I need is to remember that that's available to me too. What I need to understand is that I just have really potent desires. And even though these feelings are not comfortable and this uh, this range of emotional states that you have going on aren't necessarily easy or fun or pleasant... At the end of the day, your range is going to be intact. You're going to have a full, full, vibrant rainbow of experiences. And that's really what this comes down to. But I'm never going to live in the camp of ultimate detachment. So what will make this easier for you is if you view negative feeling as a signal. And that signal will inform you of other things. And then you can course correct from there. But don't beat yourself up or demonize yourself or see yourself as a problem. That stuff will just carry you into a direction you don't want to go. That's going to make life really, really, really difficult. One more thought that I have on jealousy. And this is kind of tied into what originally led to the birth of Apex, the mastermind that I have coming up in October. Because one of the things that I noticed is that I was experiencing a lot of clutter in my field. And generally speaking, that's not normal for me. I feel like my energetic field is really intact, really solid, really healthy the vast majority of the time, unless my energetic immune system is low. That can happen from a lot of stress or traumas or family stuff coming up. But aside from that stuff, my maintenance is very much on point. But one of the things that was causing this issue for me or this sensation of clutter is overconsumption. And to be clear, consumption in and of itself is not bad. Consumption isn't bad, but if it's in excess of pretty much anything, you're not going to feel good. The same way if you drink too much coffee, you're going to be wildly jittery and stressed out and you're going to start sweating. If you eat too much sugar, you're going to have a bellyache. If you drink too much water, you could flood your electrolyte system and die. Like anything in excess is not going to feel good and consumption is no different. Even if it's good stuff, you can overconsume a lot of good stuff and actually feel like you have too much of someone else's energy in your system. And that doesn't feel good. So depending on what 
you are consuming, at a certain point, you want to ask yourself, is this allowing me to calibrate up or am I calibrating down to something? Right? If you're consuming news all day, your calibration is so jacked. It's so jacked up. There's no way you're going to be able to keep your energetic field clean. No way. Can't be done. I've never, ever, ever in my entire life seen that done. So you are making this incredibly difficult for yourself to calibrate to something new. And I know I pick on the news a lot, but man, it will calibrate you down really fast. So the same goes for things that are triggering and inspire jealousy. If you're over consuming and you're seeing a lot of people succeed or make lots of money or get really fit to the point where it is causing paralysis, because this happens for a lot of people, is they over consume to the point where they completely detach from, let's say, aligned action and start moving into comparison, separation, anxiety, inadequacy, anger, you get the idea. This is going to carry you in a really dark direction very quickly. So you want to be extra mindful of how much of this you're consuming, what it's doing for you. If, like let's say you scrolled past and you read something that triggered that jealousy. My recommendation would be that you do what I suggested right away. Like, put the phone down, identify the desire, get connected, because I'll stop everything. If I feel a ping of jealousy, I catch it in the moment and I correct it in the moment. If you're not doing that, it is getting stuck in your system. And then if you start doing that, all day and you're unconscious to this feeling because it does require a lot of awareness. It requires emotional intelligence, right? It it requires these things. You've got to be aware of what's going on internally. And if you're not, then these things are going to start adding up. Something like general comparison in a way that inspires you and helps you calibrate to something greater Right, so if you're listening to my podcast, and I know a lot of people, I I just got a message from someone the other day saying they were going back to episode one, and they were going to listen through all of them again. I mean, people consume my podcast a lot, but if it feels good, if I'm helping you calibrate up, then that's completely different because I'm activating things within you. And that is something that can help you step into higher expression. Then that would absolutely work in your favor and that would be beneficial to you. However, if you're listening to my work and I trigger you to high hell and you're, you're angry at my success, right? Take a break. Take a break. Step away from my content. Get away from it. Go d- get a palate cleanser. Sit in some solitude, do some movement, right? Get away from it, you know, and these are also really great markers for us to check in with ourselves because then you can start seeing, okay, this is something that made me really jealous in the past. Where am I now? And then maybe you do a little bit of work around it or you reconnect with your own power and then you revisit that same thing. It might not inspire that level of jealousy after you massage it a little bit. But the main thing, especially in the age of social media with the amount of information we have access to, when it comes to jealousy, you want to be careful. Are you consuming to the point where your mission is lost? Are you consuming to the point where you're feeling inadequate? Are you consuming to the point where you're no longer taking aligned action in the direction of your dreams, right? Now you've let the jealousy fester or the comparison fester. So as I mentioned before, this was part of what inspired the cleanse component of Apex or the fasting component of Apex because what like two central pieces of that are is a consumption fast and a substance fast. 
are things that are involved because that is going to be a huge reset button for the energetic field so that you're able to start reworking other pathways that you want to be dominant. Because the jealousy pathway, the separation pathway, is not one that you want to be dominant all the time. Or the scarcity pathway is not something that you want to be running the show. The fear pathway is not something that you want to be anchored into and nice and cozy with. They're just not. It's going to make your life really miserable and really dark. And so by fasting, decluttering your field... You know, we do this with spring cleaning, but we we forget that our energetics are also an important part of this as well. Everyone does a three-day broth fast or a green juice cleanse or all of these different things that people focus on in terms of decluttering and fasting and cleaning. But when it comes to our energetics, we get real lazy with that because we underestimate the importance of it. And so that was really key for me is like, I want everyone in Apex who's walking through that container to be experiencing full energetic optimization. And in order to get into that space, you really have to declutter your field. And the same way that if we wanted to detoxify the body, well, 80% of that is to stop like eating and consuming garbage. Right? You can't say, I'm going to detoxify my body and eat McDonald's and drink beer every day. It's not going to work. Your body isn't going to get the opportunity to fully detoxify if you're pumping it with that stuff. Right? If you're inhaling pesticides, you're, you're not giving your body an opportunity to do what it naturally wants to do, which is reset. That's what our bodies are designed to do. That's why you have cells that die and cells that are reborn every day. Your energetic field is very similar. If you're constantly consuming something on an energetic or frequency basis, you're not considering what that's adding up into. So you want to give yourself the opportunity to not be in constant consumption of energetics, right? This can even this can even be true for like relationships that you have in your life. If you're in constant consumption of shitty relationships that that are inspiring a lot of negative feeling, that's also very taxing on your energetic field. But I think for the vast majority of people right now, we're doing this with social media, we're doing this with over-consuming digitally. So this is, this is tied into all of this. And I would also recommend this for anyone who's dealing with jealousy. Part of your process is going to be stop looking at it until you actually have a strengthened connection and desire muscle So that when you are looking at something in your field or you're looking at someone else having an experience you desire, it's not going to derail you. But you have to stop giving yourself the negative input to detoxify, cleanse, to fast, to reset yourself. Then strengthen your inner faculties and then come back to it. All right, friends. This is a reminder for you that Apex begins on October 1st. If you would like to apply, the link is in the show notes, or you can go to onyxhealing.com slash Apex. The application will be there, all of the details. It is a badass container. I'm so proud of it. So you're welcome to go check that out if you feel the call. You are also welcome to check out all of the classes that are available, and you can also look at the replay of God's Looking Glass. I will leave the link for that as well in the show notes or description box. Make sure you check that out. It's going to be available until the 30th of this month, so you have a little bit of time to check that out. And... If you need a prayer request or if you would like to make a submission to the advice column, then you're more than welcome to do that as well. The link is in the description box in the show notes as always. And that is a wrap, people. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. I hope this helps. 
and I will talk to all of you beautiful people next time. Have an awesome week, and I will talk to you later.